Hi traders, Epic Big Dog here with another video on the weekly outlook. Now listen here, this week is exciting. We've got some jobs coming out this Friday. US jobs, they expect you to raise the numbers uh, uh, to 140, uh, 140k. I'm not too excited about that. That's not a good number. But I do see that the average earnings is dropping from 0.4% to 0.3%. That's going to be something we need to take a look at. Also, we've got the rate decision for the Aussies. They decided to, uh, they're going to decide to cut the rates 25 basis point. What's that going to do to the market? Well, we'll go ahead and take a look and see how that plans out on the technical. Also, I'm seeing a lot of the pound crosses and the JPY crosses. That's going to create some sort of support or resistance, and we should be paying attention to those pairs as well. Traders, all of that. And by the way, I brought in a guest. And his guest, the guest name is called Carsten Wins. There we go. Carsten Wins. Carsten Wins is with us today. And yes, he did take a nice good win this weekend. We're very proud of him and very excited about the Eagles. Uh, okay, this is not about the Eagles. We'll talk about the markets right after this. All righty, traders, well, welcome back. And yes, we are going to be talking about the market and not about football. All right, I am excited, but that's going to be on the side. We're going to go ahead and talk about the pound crosses, uh, how the pound crosses are moving this week, uh, and how we can go ahead and react in that. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think we're going to see any sort of confirmation trades yet this week. I think it's going to take maybe the next couple of weeks before we start seeing some great setup. Now, we do see some JPY crosses also setting up. We'll look at those. But more importantly, traders, let's look at the Aussie crosses and let's go take a look at see what the dollar is going to do this week as we head into the non-farm payroll. All right, so let's go ahead and jump straight into the charts. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the data first right here. Here's the data. And in the data, we can see here, these are the important data that I'm looking at for this week. I'm going to be looking at the cash rate that's coming out on the Tuesday. And that's going to be at 1230. They expect to cut the rates 25 basis point. Which, by the way, anytime they cut rates, it's normally weak, 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 right? They, uh, we start seeing some weakness out in that pair. But the thing is this, even though we're expecting some weakness out in this pair, is the market going to actually back dip? And I don't think so. I don't think that we're going to see a big dip in the Aussie crosses. Because why? Because from a technical perspective, we've seen the market holding at support. And if we're going to hold that support off from a technical perspective, then what I can expect then is maybe a dip. All right, and then a continuation of the rally. Now, this is the deal. The deal is this. We've got the statement coming up at the same time that we have the rate decision. Now, I think that the statement is already being, it was not the statement, but the, 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 the 25 basis cut is already being priced into the market and that we're going to see the actual statement move the market more than actually the rate decision. All right, because that is a given going to cut 25 basis points unless they come up with a surprise and cut 50 basis points there's no doubt they're not going to raise the rates that's not going to happen so if they're coming with a 50 basis point which is very unlikely but that could sort of spook the markets and we could see a different reaction but if they come out as expected 25 basis cut which has been priced in then it's really going to come back down to the actual statement and what is said in the commentary right and so we'll check out and see how that moves but from a technical perspective we're expecting price to continue to then go ahead and support that level and bounce back up. But we'll talk about that when we get to the technicals. Now, we also got some data coming out on Wednesday. Uh, here it is here, here, Wednesday, we have the, uh, uh, the ADP numbers, and that's a leading indicator of what we can expect in the non-farm payrolls. So we've got that number coming out on the, uh, the Wednesday. And as you can see right here, they're expecting 140K. But let's go to the actual non-farm because this is where things are going to start moving the market right here. So we're going to see maybe a bit of slow movement in the dollar crosses over the week as we get into the non-farm payroll, all eyes on non-farm payroll, right? And this is what's important right here. See the 140K right here? That's not a big number. And I'm not, I'm, I'm saying boo to non-farm payroll right here, right? To so the employment change, no, it's really excited. But I'm really interested to see what's happening here with the, uh, the average earnings. The average earnings is what's the driving force right here for the, the employment market. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the average earnings. Now, the average earnings is expected to drop. That's not good. Now, if that's not good, what do you expect for the dollar? We expect dollar to start falling. All right. Now, let's get straight into the technicals because the technicals is what's really going to drive the market. Right. 
So if we're going to go to the technicals, let's go straight to the dollar index. And let's go ahead and check out dollar index. All right. And here on dollar index, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and take a look at is the, the, uh, the, the daily chart. Now, this is what you need to understand. Look at this right here, and I'm going to just be very brief on this. I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but we are in what we call a fourth wave consolidation. All right. Now, we do have the market looking for the fourth wave up here at the top. And I always I said, and I've been saying it for a while, that I'm expecting price to move back down to this level, supported by this trend line. I, I want to see price moving there. And, and I actually said that I expect the price to move down here first before it goes up all the way up here at the top. And that could still happen. All right, it could still happen because the market's tied up in consolidation. And if that's the case, then maybe we're going to hold off here. Before we get up to this level right here, we're going to hold off here and then move back down, then test the trend line. It still stays inside consolidation, as you can see right here, support there and support here. And then it's going to go back up again and then go up to that level that I referred to. So we could absolutely still see the market come back to that trend line. And listen here. If we stay inside consolidation and the market stays in this range up until Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week, because the ADP numbers may even start moving the, uh, the, the dollar bearish based on the forecast. So we'll take a look and see what happens. Now check out the eight hour. The eight hour is also showing the same consolidation right here. Check this out. If you go ahead and look at the eight hour, this is the SSL uh, here with the uh, smarttrader.com. And I'm using the sentiment strength line to indicate when we're going to start seeing some turnaround. We could get an early turnaround here on the 8 hour, which is going to be something like this, where you see a nice little bearish candle, like we have here in the corner, all right, at the top here at resistance. That's a perfect time to start thinking weak dollar. Now, what, it, what does the dollar index weakness mean for us? Well, traders, that means that every pair that is trading against the dollar, like pound US dollar, euro US dollar, all those good stuff, Aussie US dollar, they would be gaining against the dollar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the, the dollar crosses, right? Now, I am going to dig into this a lot more uh, as we uh, go into our, um, uh, into our um, uh, weekly uh, session at the end of the week. Uh, I will dig more into the actual crosses, but let's just take a quick look at each one of these pairs. I'm going to go to the Aussie US dollar first, take a look at that, and again, look at the 8 hour. And I'm just looking at the 8 hour right here. Look at the 8 hour. 8 hours says that we're bearish right now, but we could be turning around, and if we do, this could be an upside move to the top. So, really, Aussie US dollar says that we could set up for a bullish move on Aussie US dollar. Now, let's go to the, uh, um, let me go to, uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, no, hang on, my bad. Uh, oh, yeah, Euro. Let's go to Euro US dollar. Euro US dollar has fallen. All right, now, now we've fallen and we've broken through the support level right here. So which means that we're not looking for anything upswing. So we're looking for either bottom uh, at the uh, on a larger time frame, or we're simply going to go ahead and just look for a short term correction. So let's take a look and see what's going on here. If I go to the uh, the daily time frame right here, we starting to break out of this wedge, all right, to the downside. So I wouldn't do anything on this until the market goes back above. So we're getting some strong uh, dollar that's pushing the euro weak because the, the euro is being weak, right? And, and any sort of news that comes out that's going to be uh, favoring the other currency against the euro will then push the euro even further weaker, right? So we've seen this weakness out in the euro US dollar right here. But traders, if the market comes back up inside this wedge right here, then this will be another buying opportunity for us to go ahead and look for a breakout to the upside because this is a falling wedge. And if this is a falling wedge, then we should be expecting the market to go ahead and continue. And I'm going to just go ahead and pull in a couple of things here. Let's just do this. I'm going to go ahead and create this trend line. And I'm going to take this trend line right here. And I'm going to move it to the bottom here. Oh, check that out. All right. So just a little adjustment right here is now showing me a little different sign of what I can expect in this particular pair right here. Let me move this out the way. And so here we're looking at this right here as a possible move. So you see right here, traders, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking for price, all right, to actually hold at the support right here. Give me a beautiful daily bullish candle. If I get a bullish daily candle right here, 
then I may go ahead and start looking for price to at least in the short term or mid term rally up to that level right there. And that level could be priced at around about um, 1.1197. So let's call it 1.12. Uh, 1 and then uh, and then look for the breakout to the upside. All right. So this could be a key level, a key level. If we get the US numbers come out a weaker than expected, this could be a key level start looking to buy euro, US dollar back up north. Now let's go to another uh, cross. Let's go to pound and I'm going to go back to the eight hour. This is pound US dollar. Pound US dollar is also looking for a bullish setup. In fact, I'll be watching this very carefully right here. Looking for a bullish setup. I'm waiting for pound to go ahead and confirm bullish and then I'll look to start buying pound US dollar. Again, this could be Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. We could see this setting up and by Friday we could be well on our way already because based on the ADP numbers this week, this could set us up for a nice trade to the upside. So watch pound crosses this week, my friends, uh, or at least at least uh, US crosses. Uh, they are definitely setting up. Here's the uh, New Zealand US dollar as well. New Zealand US dollar, uh, we see the U turn right here. It looks like it's range bound. Let's go to the larger time frame. Anytime I see that type of movement, then I'll go to the larger time frame to see what I'm really looking for on this chart. And if I can pick up something here on the larger time frame that could help me make a decision, then I'll use it. So, uh, so at the moment right now, we're at a, and I see a level here. Let's see here. Okay. Look at that. So you can see here, traders, that we're at a very key level of support right here. Support there, and now we're at support right here. So this is a, a, a very strong support level right here. If we get anything bullish, confirmation, any bullish confirmation on the weekly, or even the daily, or the, even the, the one hour, that may be an earlier sign to go ahead and start thinking about reversal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the one hour, but firstly the daily. Take a look at the daily right here. So the daily is bearish. And let's see, traders, it's no doubt that we are bearish. But now if you look over here, and I pull this, let me pull that aside there, and you can see here that we are bearish, all right? We are bearish, but we're looking for price to move back and turn around right about here. So as price falls, all right, and that could be another, looks like 250 pips based on the daily. So 250 pips, we've got about 250 pips left for this to move down south. That means that traders, if price continues to move back down south right here and find support, then only at that point we'll start looking to buy. Now, as I said that the daily, uh, the, the euro, uh, uh, sorry, the dollar index, I mentioned the dollar index is sideways, right? And with the dollar index sideways, all right, I'm seeing the same thing here on the New Zealand US dollar. That means that traders that bad news out of the US come the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday could go ahead and create support here and push this pair back up because we are in a fourth wave correction and price is looking for us uh, look for price uh, this price is looking to move back up to around about 65.59 before we start heading back down south so in in a way when i look at the daily right here even though my 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 smart gate says that we're strong bearish and i can see it that everything's below the technicals and so i'm looking at this and i'm saying well yes it's true but we are in the fourth wave and we are at support right here. If I do see anything bullish at that point, I'm going to look to buy on U, uh, New Zealand US dollar. So I'm excited about the dollar crosses, right? So that's the first thing. Dollar crosses, very excited about. We're going to get some setups on the dollar crosses that we can take advantage of, all right? And we just have to make sure that we wait for the, the confirmation before jumping in. We do have the data coming out on Friday, but according to what I'm seeing right now, my prediction for the, uh, the, the news on Friday, that we can see a bearish dollar. That's it. My prediction up front right now, weak dollar. We'll see what the numbers bring, uh, what the numbers are reported at, and then of course how the market reacts on the day. But right now, I'm predicting dollar weakness. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, JPY crosses. I mentioned the JPY crosses. I'm going to start off with uh, uh, Aussie JPY right here. In fact, sorry, my bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Aussie crosses because. We got the the rate decision coming out this week, right? So let's go ahead and take a look and see how that's playing out. All right. So as I go ahead and take a look at the chart right here, uh, you'll notice a few things. Uh, first, thing, number one, uh, this Aussie JPY right here, a lot of consolidation right here. See how the market's created this wave going up? This is wave one. This is wave three. Now we're looking for wave five to go up here to retest that support. So Aussie JPY, I think we're at support, and and if we break out. 
If we get a nice little breakout, a bullish breakout in Aussie JPY, I'm thinking bullish. And we move in, check out the, uh, the smart gauge. We moved out of a strong sell to a sell, now to almost neutral. So we may be heading back into that buy zone very, very soon. Check out the Aussie JPY, write it down. You must check out the Aussie JPY this week. Now, if I go to the Aussie crosses, remember we expected some rate decision out this week. Let's take a look and see, uh, you know, let's look at the daily. Uh, let's look at the daily right here. So the daily, no confirmation that the daily is going to go bullish. We see the smart case says in a strong sell, but we do have some strong support here. All right, and this support holds, and we do get the data coming out, uh, or at least the rate statement that is hawkish for the Aussie, which means it's bullish, then, uh, then we could see this pair go back up to the top here to retest that level. So I'm going to say this. I think that Aussie data is going to be uh, that what comes out this week, uh, or sorry, with the rate decision and the statement, I'm thinking we may see some bullish Aussie. Hey, now let's, let's continue. I'm just going to go to each and every other pair. Uh, we've already seen the Aussie Swiss starting to show a bit of support there and, and bullish movement. So yeah, you can see there, there's that support. Aussie Swiss is starting to push back up north. We've got some bullish movement here today. Also a little bit of range bound trading. We need to break out of that. But we're starting to see some upside move on the Aussie Swiss. So again, could we see some bullish movement taking place on this pair? Let's go to Aussie. Um, um, actually, in fact, I'm going to go Aussie US dollar. Let's go to Aussie US dollar right here. Same thing here. Check out. All right. Now we do have some US data that's going to affect this as well. But if you see right here, again, uh, if I draw a trend line going across right here, we come back to retest re that. It had a breakout. We're going to come back up to retest the top of this trend line. So what am I thinking with Aussie US dollar? I'm thinking Aussie US dollar is going to go ahead and close out something bullish and it's going to rally up all the way up here to around about 69.42 to test up uh, those trends. So again, uh, that could be a 200 pip upside rally. There we go, 200 pips on this. So I'm seeing a lot of support based on the Aussie crosses. A lot of support right there. So traders, again, this is only a technical analysis, right? And based on the technical analysis, we're seeing support, support, support with the dollar, uh, with the Aussie dollar. So which means that traders, I'm expecting that the, the, whatever the news is going to do, uh, whatever the news comes out as, uh, whatever it comes out in the, in the statement is going to drive uh, this, this pair bullish. Now, I'm not talking about initially, because initially we're going to have a rate cut of 25 basis points. I'm talking about when the statement comes out, it's going to be a little choppy, and then we're going to start seeing the market take up in the direction. So I'm saying maybe like, Early morning on Tuesday morning after the data comes out, then we start seeing some sort of reaction. Again, don't react on the news, react on what the market does after the news because that's when everything's in and everyone's starting to digest it and then go ahead and take some trades. So this is what I'm seeing here on the Aussie. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at um, some of the pound crosses. Now I spoke about pound crosses. I'm going to go to Euro pound first. Uh, Euro pound. And I'm going to go to the larger time frame. And traders, we add support right here. So we hit support right here on the weekly. All right, we hit support over the weekly. Uh, Euro is weak, all right, but yet this is bouncing back up again. And the reason why we've seen some bounce back up, the reason why I've closed out with a bullish candle uh, last week is because of the news that we had, uh, well, these, the correction that we were expecting out of pound. Now, we had a lot of pound corrections, and I might have to go this to a lower time frame. Let's see here. All right, so here it is here. Now, this one's reacted a little differently, but you can see right here, this is, this is the daily time frame. So the market's gone ahead and traded south right here. We're looking for a correction. So Euro pound, believe it or not, we're still looking for a bit of correction. So this could be a, maybe a little bit of uh, positive news out of Euro that's going to drive us back up again. But ultimately, traders, we're still looking for this pair to go ahead and fall. So I'm looking for Euro pound to fall. And the reason why I'm expecting is because I'm expecting pound to be the driving force right here. Now, let me go ahead and recover, uh, not recover, let me go ahead and re repeat what I said earlier on about the pound. I did not, I do not, I do not think... <laughs> I have to get my words right. I do not think that the pound is actually going to go ahead and give us the signals this week. We could be just confirming the, the, the support levels before the market goes ahead and takes off. Now, that could be only by the end of the week towards next week that we'll actually start seeing the market drive in the direction and show some momentum behind it. But until that point, I'm expecting that the pound is going to give us some signs that, hey, 
uh, there's going to be a turning point very soon. All right. So, um, so I'm checking out the, the euro, the euro Aussie, um, at least the euro pound, sorry. Uh, and then let's go to now a, another pair. And I want to go ahead and take a look at pound Aussie. Let's go to pound Aussie. So pound Aussie, if I look at the daily time frame right here and I break it up, you can see again, we see this nice little swing here. Price moved up, come back down, going up, now come back down, finding support here, and now waiting for a nice bullish candle. We started off today with a little bit of a bullishness that's pulled back a little bit uh, over, the, uh, over the course of today. So we're looking to go bullish. We haven't got the signals yet, but as soon as I get a pound Aussie bullish signal, I may go ahead and trade this long. Now, grant to traders, remember, we're expecting some news out in the Aussie, all right? So if the rate decision is going to be positive, all right, if the statement of these is going to be positive for the, uh, uh, for the Aussie, then we could absolutely start and see um, this pair falling south, all right? We'll see it fall south because of the strength coming out in Aussie. So this one right here is a little iffy, but by, let's say, by Wednesday, uh, or at least a, the latter part of Tuesday, uh, after the, the rate decision comes out for the Aussies, uh, if this shows me a bullish candle, I'm in. I'm definitely in. If it shows an indecision right here, then that means that both Aussie and used, uh, uh, both Aussie and Pound are going to be strong, and that's why we've seen a bit of consolidation. But I'm saying let's just wait this one on the sideline and wait for the confirmation of this one because this one is a little iffy. And I am expecting the market to go ahead and rally up, but of course, the news coming out for the Aussie, that might be a little different. Now, let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, Pound Canadian. Pound Canadian is showing the same sort of signs right here, all right? Now, I'm going to look at the, uh, the, uh, look at the, the, the U.S. oil uh, to take a look and see what happens with U.S. oil, because if Canadian weakens, then that means US oil, uh, U.S. oil is weakening. Now, if you take a look at the technicals right here, we're at a very key level of support. Now, traders, am I going to go ahead and buy right now? No. I'm going to wait for confirmation. So check out Pound Canadian. If we get a bullish candle on Pound Canadian, it may be time to start to look to go long, at least in the short term, traders. At least in the short term. I'm looking for this level up here at the top. And that's around about 168. But I've got to get the signal first. All right. I've got to get the signal first. I'm currently still long on Pound uh, CAD. But I'm looking to add on to this. Now, the 8-hour shows us very strong weakness right now on the 8-hour. But you can see also on the 8-hour, we've also come back to a level of support right here. Now, we want to see the market hold at this level. Maybe show some indecision and eventually go back up again because that's what we're anticipating. All right, we're anticipating the upside rally. So, no confirmation yet. And again, traders, trade on confirmation. Now, if you look at the weekly time frame, you probably say, Epic Big Dog, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? With that bearish candle there last week, how the heck are we going to ever get up on the pound Canadian? I mean, this is going to go bearish. Now, granted, I look at that and I'll say, I get it. I hear what you're saying. Let's go take a look at US oil. Let's get a little more information here. Now, what's the, uh, what's the, th what's the only thing that's going to drive uh, the pound cad north is if we get weak, can uh, weak Canadian, right? And check out US oil. US oil closed out with a bearish uh, dark cloud cover. All right, we close out with a bearish dark cloud cover right about here, and so we may see US oil back down to support. Support could be down here at about $50 a barrel. Now, if we see weak US oil, what's that going to mean? It means that Canadian is going to weaken. That's going to push the pound Canadian bullish. So that's what I'm hoping and banking on is that we would at least get the confirmation from US oil. Now, you can see here on the smart gauge, US oil is very strong bearish. All right. So let's see if we can get some further weakness in US oil. And if I go to the, uh, let's go to the daily time frame. And, uh, sorry, this is actually the hourly. If we go to the hourly time frame right here, then what I could expect US oil to do is to do something like this. Uh, come back down to this level right here, which is not far off. It looks like about $54 a barrel. Uh, it may bounce back up here, then go back up to $56 a barrel. And then it's going to fall back down to about $52 a barrel. So we could see it bouncing back and forth. So again, even though I'm expecting some weak uh, U.S. oil, uh, I don't think the pound cat is going to be a big mover this week. I think it's going to be setting at support. And once it settles at support, then it will go ahead and trade in a direction. So we're going to have to wait it out because, you know, it's, it's, it's all about timing, right? And if the timing's there, 
then we could go ahead and uh, look for the opportunity. And what is timing? Timing is not just waiting for the uh, uh, it's not just waiting for the, the the fundamentals to line up, but it's also waiting for the market to go ahead and confirm that we have a trade set up. And uh, it's the technicals that are going to go ahead and give us that, right? We want to make sure that the technicals are setting up those setups. And at the moment, right now, not really feeling it at the moment. So let's go back to those pound crosses. All right, so I'm going to jump to pound uh, JPY. Pound JPY, uh, I, I see that I'm expecting some upside move in JPY crosses. Uh, and if I look over here on the 8 hour, already on the 8 hour, I'm starting to see some sort of hen. Uh, I just don't like the 8 hours confirmation here because we've had a flip flop to the downside right here. So you look here, we had a bullish uh, bullish signal. Uh, let me just pull it up again. Yeah, we had a bullish signal right here, and then we had a bearish signal there. So we had bullish bearish, so it's pretty much saying it's sideways, uh, pound JPY. Uh, let's go take a look at the technicals on the daily. I, I, if I get a bullish signal on the daily, which I don't have right here, and you can see the consolidation. All right. You can see how the market on the daily has been sideways, sideways, sideways. So I am looking for a bullish signal. So pound JPY, if I get a pound JPY bullish signal, I'm good to go. I'm going to look to go long on pound JPY once I get the signal on that. Now, uh, pound US dollar. Let's go to pound US dollar. Pound US dollar, again, um, I think we discussed this already, but um, if we get, if this support holds here, and if we do get the data coming out for the US, that's going to say, a strong data, uh, uh, sorry, weak, uh, weak average earnings, and the weak average earnings on Friday is going to create a support level for the market right here and start driving this pair up north, only due to weak uh, data out in the US, then I would be a buyer on pound US dollar. So check out pound US dollar, it may take, it to, it may take us towards the end of the week before we actually start seeing some clear indication, maybe the ADP numbers on Wednesday, all right, check out the ADP numbers on Wednesday, because the ADP numbers right here are going to be what could start moving the market right here. There it is. ADP numbers at 8.15, that's what's going to maybe move the market. Now, again, the only thing that you may, may see this may be a dud news report is because the, this number right here is not a good number. They're expecting uh, 140K. It is down from the previous. So maybe that's going to be a down move there. But you can see right here that uh, they are looking at 140k that's not this is going to be like i said boo to the uh, uh the non-farm employment change not really focused much on that and so this may be a little bit of a dud right here on on, on wednesday but maybe that maybe I, I i don't understand fundamentals as much as i should know but maybe that could be uh just a little bit of a uh, inside uh, uh you know a reaction to the market that could be bearish on the dollar and, and start the trend, at least start the trend for us this week. Uh, but check out the pound US dollar, see how that, that, that moves. Uh, and then if I go to, uh, let's get, take a look at uh, the US oil. All right. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> We've got to use it. I want to go back to uh, dollar index, my bad. So dollar index right here, if you go back to dollar index right here, and I look at the way the marks are moving, Key levels that you need to watch out for this week for the non-farm peril is, of course, up here at the top. If we hold up at that level and we close out with a bearish candlestick formation right there, we can start thinking about moving south. And if we're going to move south, wait for the market to come back, uh, back back to the support level right here. And don't think that the market's going to break yet. I think we're going to get that final rally. If we haven't hit this, this move before we get down to this move right here, then we may need to see, we may need to be a little bit patient as price moves down here because we can see another upside move, a final upside move right here before we see a bigger move in dollar index. So the market's moving really cool right now. I'm expecting us to see uh, some sort of uh, uh, slower moves on the pound to confirm it. I'm definitely going to keep my eye on the pound crosses this week. Um, now, if we're going to see some, some, some rally in the pound crosses, it may be due to some, some news coming out on Brexit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But other than that, other than that, I would probably go ahead and focus in on a, a, a confirmation signal on the pound crosses. Uh, I definitely want to look at the U.S. crosses this week. The U.S. crosses, I think, are going to be a good mover, but only towards the mid part of this week. So around about Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, obviously, with the non pom peril coming out, that's going to be important for us to go ahead and check out. So exciting week this week. Maybe a little bit of patience needed, all right? But I think it's going to be able to get us set up 
for the month of October as we're going into some trading this uh, this month. Um, uh, it's the non-farm parallels can definitely set us in a trend, and I think based on what I'm seeing right now, there's absolutely a lot of parallels that are just waiting for the data to go ahead and start trending in a direction. So with that said, traders, I'm going to see you guys back again uh, on the Friday. We got the non-farm parallels. I'm going to send out a link so you can go ahead and join us on the non-farm peril. Uh, Chris and I normally do a dual session. I'm going to have to check with Chris and see if he's available for that. But we want to go ahead and check out the non-farm peril on the day. We're going to do a, 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 a dual session. Very excited about that. And also excited traders about uh, what's happening right now in the market. Now, we're also going to talk about the Euro Aussie. The Euro Aussie has got a, a setup uh, that we've been speaking about. It's called the, uh, the Euro Prediction. And I'm going to go ahead and send out a video on that this week and update you on a new trading opportunity because if you actually look at the way the marks are set up on the Euro Aussie, we had a big bearish candle on the weekly. That means that we could be expecting some bearish trading on Euro Aussie this week. Now, specifically tomorrow, with the Aussie data coming out, if the Aussie data is going to be strong, which we're expecting, then that will push the Euro Aussie bearish because the Euro is bearish at the moment right now. So that will be a big move, a great opportunity. Make sure, traders, that you subscribe to this channel because when I post that information, you want to get access to it. All right, with that being said, traders, this is the Epic Big Dog, and I will see you in the next video.